this week, uh, Pasha's Ve'eva, I have the, uh, the distinct privilege again of uh, delivering a Dvar Torah, dealing with the Pasha. And the thrust of the message is, is twofold, at least this particular time, was not only will the context or the content of the source of the message relate to the Pasha, but also there is a personal element that is connected with it, which I will mention later on in the course of the, my discussion this morning dealing with Pasha Be'eva. We do find that in this set of Be'eva, this is the place where the age of Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron are mentioned at the time that they went to speak to Paro. Because the text says there in Pasha Be'eva, it says in the following, in Perik Zion, Posik Zion, Moshe ben Shmeinim Shona, the Aaron ben Sholosh Shmeinim Shona, the Dabram el Paro. It just mentioned that the age of Moshe Rabbeinu was 80 years, and Paro and uh, Aaron was 83 years old when they were speaking to Paro. They're coming now to demand from Paro that release the Jewish people from captivity, and the rest is described in the Seder, said in the Torah as a refusal of Paro, the beginning of the Makos of the plagues, which carries on into Pasha's bow, and the resulting exodus from the time, which is described in Pasha's bow and later Bishalach. Well, the question is, what's the significance of mentioning the age of Moshe and Aaron specifically at for this particular juncture, this very critical moment when they're going to see Paro and ask the man who really what is known in the world, let my people go. Let the Jewish people leave Egypt. So you find that some of the commentators remark, Eben Ezra has a discussion and wants to say that his words in the text is he mentions his Krishna Sam, he mentions their years in which He's saying that we don't find in the entire Tanakh. That's what the Ebenezer said. Bechol ha-mikra nevi'im shizkirim ha-kosov shiznabu v'ziknusim. That there we don't find in all of Tanakh prophets that prophesied in their old age that accept. Well, the only ones he says are Moshe v'Aram. Not these, because they're Madrega, their great stature to receive prophecy and so forth, that's my explanation of the Ebenezer, is greater than all of the other prophets. He says, even though we find, and not only that, he says, because the Hashem appeared with the Shechina, with the Amud Onan, with this cloud, this divine cloud, which uh, uh, indicated that the Shechina was talking to Moshe Rabbeinu and, of course, to Aaron, whatever it was. Or oh, even by Shmuel, where it just says Amud Onan, it does not mean that. It just it refers to a contact with Shmuel, but not on the level of prophecy of Moshe the Aaron. That's what the Ebenezer says, because all other prophets, because the emphasis of the difference between the prophecies of Moshe the Aaron was, to them, the Torah was given through Har Sinai whereas the rest are just prophesying for two purposes. One purpose is for tochochos, for rebuke, for castigation, called a criticism. That's the role of prophecy in the rest of Tanakh, as a general rule, Ebenezer says. And also asidus, to uh, give a picture or to foretell what is going to happen in future times. Generally, we always refer to a prophet as being uh, saying what's going to happen when we really don't know what is going to happen. He has a message to tell what's going to happen. That's the way the Ebenezer says. However, the Sephorno has a very relevant point. It's not just a comment on the Chumash, on the Torah, because the Sephorno states quite clearly that why is, why is, is the fact that Moshe was that old, 80 years old, and Aaron was 83 years old, in Kozik Nusam, with their age, as if to say, 
in spite of their age, when we might think of people of that age are infirm or so forth, nevertheless, be his They rose up, in other words, they did with diligence, with zrizus, what we call this agility, this very positive approach to fulfill the words of Hashem. Because in truth, so the question might arise, and this is what the Sephorno seems to anticipate. Well, we might say that at that time, the age of 83 or 80 is not really old age. After all, Moshe Rabbeinu lived to 120, and Aaron also lived about that particular age. He was older, so maybe 80 years then was not the way we look on an 80-year-old man now. So he says the following, no, because from the Sefer Tehillim, where we have it in the davening on Shabbos morning, where it says Tefillah the Moshe, there Moshe Rabbeinu is saying very clearly, he says, Ki biyomim heim, in those days, far over yamei haseva. It's already past the days of seva, because zikna, we know, and this is uh, the source is ben shishi zikna. Person is considered a zokan at the age of 60. At the age of 70, he's seva, a gray haired person. He's an older person. And the Moshe Rabbeinu says in that capital, in that chapter in Tehillim, that Yemei Shnoseyem, Shnoseyem, the years, the days of our years are 70. Ve'im begvuros, but if we were, as if to say, given extra strength, we reach the age of 80, Shmoni. So uh, even although they were at advanced age, they were the ones that followed the will of Hashem with agility, with a great deal of activity and strength to go before power. So what kind of a message is the Torah is telling us, especially if we analyze the words of this forno? What the Torah is telling us is a striking thing, that the most, perhaps the greatest event for the entire Jewish people described in the Torah not only Har Sinai, which is later, but the Yetzias Mitzrayim, the exodus of Egypt, this gigantic cataclysmic event, call it a revolution of the whole people leaving Mitzrayim in the midst of the many Nisim and Ephors and many wonders. Who are the leaders? Who are the initiators? Who are the, I might say, the channels, the conduits of this revolution, of this leadership? was Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, two old men. They were the ones that were leaders at this particular time. Which seems to point out the fact that, which is very contrary to ideal, the ideal aspects what we find in world culture, or especially in American culture. American culture today, and has been a long time, is youth orientation. That every emphasize is always on being young, of being very physically fit as a young person. Even we talk about senior citizens and trying to emphasize being young by being physical this way or that way or so forth. Whatever that happens to me, it means. However, here the emphasis seems to be from the Sforno that the leadership of this great contact with HaKadosh Baruch and the message to Paul leading the Jewish people out of Egypt, this great call it revolutionary movement, was led by two old men. Because what we're saying, that age, when it comes to leadership and understanding, wisdom, tact, call it experience, is not a drawback for the individual. That a person should understand if Hashem has blessed him with good health or with being aware of his very active in his faculties, He's aware of what he can do and so forth, although he has reached old age, and they take the age of Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, whatever it is, it's sending a message that older people are not to be pushed aside. They're not to be saying he's over the hill, that they can't participate in anything anymore when it comes to activity in the community and so forth. In fact, in, in some of the ancient cultures, the aged were pushed outside 
of the community. That is even mentioned in Plato's Republic, in the fifth book of Plato's Republic, where it talks about the ideal country where the philosophers are kings and kings are philosophers, to use the words of Plato, there the ideal society, the old don't have any place. And the old, the physically infirm, whatever it is, they're outside of the community. The elders are not held in that esteem the way it is as far as the hashkafa, the outlook, the Jewish welt and showing when it comes to dealing with older people who are wise, who are learned, who are capable of giving advice through their experience and knowledge and learning. Actually, this is built into Jewish life, the Torah life. Torah life has a halachic structure, how we deal with the elderly. If they, if they say or talk him, or not if they talk him. It says that you have to stand up before the gray-haired person, which would mean person past the age of 70, and, and you shall uh, bestow honor on the zokka, that one is old. Of course, the Chazal say zokka does not mean anybody that is physically old. It could also mean a young person who is learned in Torah. Ein zokka el misha kona Torah. That Zokain really, in the full sense of the meaning, he has a age of wisdom which comes through Torah learning and so forth. But in its true sense, in its actual shot, old age is not a deterrent when it comes as long as the faculties of the mind are still active and so forth. So as I said before, uh, this is a significant event in Jewish history. We find another event, the story of Hanukkah. Who was Matasyor ben Yechanan Kain Godel? He was an old man. He was an old Kain Godel. He was the one, according to all the narratives that we have of the beginning of what was called the Asmonium uprising, the rejection of the uh, attempts of Antiochus the Fourth, the, the tyrant over uh, over the Syrian Greeks, to force the Jewish people to give up religious practices and worship idolatry, the Hellenistic way of life, to reject whatever Yahadah's Judaism represents. Who was the leader of that revolt? Who really started it? It was Matas an old man. He did it, and he had the courage to do that, and followed by his sons, which is the rest, of course, in the annals of history and, of course, of Torah history behind the Hanukkah story. I find, as I say, on a personal level, this uh, message quite apropos uh, to me personally, because this coming Shabbos, Parsha Ve'eva, is the 78th anniversary of my Bar Mitzvah. So, therefore, it has a special meaning that I thank Hashem for the blessings of being able to still be in a state of active mobility, both in mind and physically as much as as much as possible, and to enjoy, so to speak, and to be encouraged by the wisdom experience that has been brought to me through many years of different places, of different times, meeting with congregations and other people through the role of being someone in a Besden and head of the Besden, and happily am able to continue on that particular role. So therefore, that's an encouraging message for anyone. As they grow older, they should become wiser, should be blessed by Hashem with that blessing, and also with the blessing of youthful thinking. In fact, there is a Hasidic interpretation, some say it's a medrash, on the end of a Pusik that we say in the Yom, where it says, Hu yinagenu almus, he should lead us above death. In other words, Hashem should lead us eternally some explain almus is one word, alamus. Alamus means from the word elam or almo, of youth. He should lead us in a role or mode of youth and activity. And that should be a blessing for anybody that should be able to reach this ideal of enjoying old age and being active in it. So it's been a great privilege to present this idea on this very significant, partious, Thank you very much.